We have a G35, it's a 2008. Uh, we got this car for really cheap. I'm not gonna say how much, but it's for this guy here. And he doesn't know anything about cars. We got a used engine and tore the whole thing apart. And we redid the timing and changed a bunch of seals and gaskets. Uh, what else did we do? Just kind of overhauled the whole thing. It's over here, why don't you come over here, I'll show it to you. Dolly, why don't you get a picture of the dolly down there? We got this from Harbor Freight. These things are pretty inexpensive. Uh, great for, you know, they're not ideal. The wheels are a little bit small, but it seems to handle the weight just fine. And, uh, you know, basically pick up this, this whole assembly here and lower it on. And you can use that table uh, cart right there for uh, actually lowering and raising powertrain back into the vehicle with the subframe. Yeah, so as far as uh, taking the powertrain out, there's a couple of things you've got to do. Remove the drive shaft right here, and that's going to cause you to actually remove the exhaust as well. And uh, we're going to unhook the rod for the transmission from this uh, lever assembly here. Uh, then over here, uh, I didn't want this to get crushed when we put it on the table or wherever, so I just took this and I kind of moved it out of the way right here. Um, and of course, uh, the catalytic converter support uh, got removed as well to make room. That's about it over here. Uh, now on this side here, we removed the outer tie rod ends. We split those off from the spindle. And that was done using a special service tool as listed in the manual. Uh, you can see there's no marks of any kind of impact on the spindles. Uh, and then also, uh, the other thing we did was uh, we removed the lower control arm ball joint stud from the spindle as well. And this is kind of the interesting thing here. If you come over on this side, you see this whole assembly is actually, there's a hole in the spindle and we use these brake caliper hooks to hold it onto the spring. And that prevents these bushings up here from really seeing any significant strain, kind of holds everything together and allows this to, essentially you can move this down. Yeah, see it kind of moves down like that. So when we unbolt the subframe, that, that's, this is just gonna come down. We got the strut um, unbolted as well. So this whole assembly should just come down. Nothing, the suspension shouldn't interact with it at all, shouldn't interface with it. Uh, then in the front here, I didn't have to, but I went ahead and I took, there's a metal piece that goes in here, and I took this piece out uh, just because I felt like it. <laughs> uh, uh, over here, we got a uh, power steering line that I unplugged. That's a hard line that goes up to the reservoir. Uh, it's actually an intermediary hard line, which later has a, a rubber hose attached to it. Uh, so you can see on this side, that's the, uh, that was hooked up over there. So we got that unplugged. Got a little extension in there to prevent it from leaking. And uh, this hose, you can actually leave it attached to the power steering pump up there. But uh, later when we go up top, I'll show you, there's a hose that goes from the actual reservoir into the pump, the inlet hose and that hose you remove. Uh, if you're gonna be uh, doing any kind of work with the crank pulley on the engine, if you're gonna have to take the crank pulley out later, right now is a great time to take it out. And uh, there's a special service tool that goes in here where you take these two bolts out and the thing kind of goes in here with some teeth. And in fact, let me go grab it. Okay. And I ordered this, uh, I just did a Google search for that part number or something came up and I, I ordered it. It was expensive. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this thing goes in here and it holds the uh, flex plate for the, for the uh, automatic transmission in here with the teeth in there. And uh, once that's being held properly, then at that point it's really easy to just take a big old bar here and just crack this thing loose. It'll come off with like a loud bang. And um, yeah, we're gonna be reusing this crank pulley because that motor had a bad crank pulley because we, we damaged it, trying to get it off some other way. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, then the other thing is, now some people say, and this goes same for the power steering as well, people say, oh yeah, you know, you take this compressor, you move it out of the way. In my experience, I've done this a couple times, and um, it to me, it's just easier just to take the refrigerant out of the system and just to leave the compressor hooked up I just feel like, you know, yeah, it cost me like a hundred bucks or whatever to put everything back and recharge the system. But I don't care, it's just, it saves me trouble. I don't have to worry about these lines breaking if something gets caught. 
the system's under pressure, uh, it's bad for the environment. So just get it evac and pull the lines off. Put a new dryer, receiver, there's receiver dryers right there. You wanna put a new receiver dryer on when you, every time you uh, open the AC system. It actually does make the system work a lot better and colder, assuming it's recharged correctly. Uh, yeah, these lines over here for the transmission obviously got unplugged as well. Radiator hose got unplugged. Um, what else up here? So the two AC lines up there. There's a, a ground wire on this side. There's a ground wire somewhere up there. A little ground wire that goes from the cylinder head. Oh, it's this thing right here. Little ground wire. Can you see that? Uh, you want to make sure you unplug that. I I just lost it. Uh, well, it's it went back here. Now I'm fighting it. There it is. Hold on, it's coming. It's okay. All right. Well, anyways, it's back there. Whatever. <laughs> Underneath here, yeah. And again, I removed this. Here's the metal plate that I took out. It looks like this. This whole thing kind of goes in the front here. We took that out. It goes like this. Yeah. And so we we unbolted that. I just I took it off just for the hell of it. Um, anyways, as far as the bottom is concerned, uh, we also drained the engine oil. We drained the transmission fluid. And uh, that's about it from down here. I don't really know if there's anything else to unplug down here. Things are looking good. Let's lower the car and we'll take a look from the top. So up here at the top, what do we have to do? So uh, let's talk over here first. So from inside the, the cabin, you gotta pull the wiring harness out for the engine. So this is the wiring harness. And basically this whole thing kind of just rides up along here. There's a, a connector, or there's a like a plastic thing. Like all this, you gotta be very careful with all these, everything's plastic and you gotta undo all these tabs. You kinda push in, you know, things move around and things start to get unclipped. And even right here, you see there's tabs here. You gotta be careful with all this stuff, you don't break it. Um, there's a connector here, this one, got unplugged here. And then, you know, these guys, we like to wrap them up like this in case, you know, water or coolant or something gets on there. Um, this, this, this guy here is a little tricky to get off, but uh, again, you know, they, they do tend to break sometimes. The way you know that you gotta release a tab on these is you look for the, the circles right here. See that round? The round circle there and here. If you look on the back side of it, you see there's a tab here and, and there where the circles are. So that's kind of how you know where to press. And then you just kind of pull it out, put it on top of the motor. Uh, fuel line right here. Um, I like to use this uh, aluminum tape, or if you have a uh, an older, an old one of these fuel dampers, you can probably, or any kind of a fitting that'll fit on here. I don't like to smell fuel when I'm working in here. It so a little aluminum tape there, and then over here I just use a little vacuum vacuum plug on the fuel damper, and we prevent the fuel from leaking out. And then uh, here I unplug one of the evap hoses from here. Uh, the rear uh, coolant. Uh, host to the heater core, uh, got that unplugged. Uh, I undid one of the connectors for the air fuel ratio sensor back here just to kind of give the engine a little more room against the, the, the engine bay here. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yeah, I just undid that just to kind of give it a little more room. I mean, it does kind of swivel. I don't think it's gonna break, but um, just felt like unplugging it. Uh, over here, the power steering, I undid the, the, the input line to the pump right here, so that way there's nothing connected now. And then this wiring harness here, this was going to the, this was going to the battery, so I just undid this, and I was able to just move this whole assembly out of the way, like that. Uh, of course, uh, radiator hoses. Over here on this side, uh, pulled two AC, AC lines from the compressor. Got those out of the way. Um, you know, certain various areas you may have to take the screws out and, uh, you know, so you get a little more maneuverability with these, uh, with these lines. Uh, and again, another heater hose back here and a vacuum line, vacuum line and the heater hose right there. Got unplugged. Uh, so I think, I think that's about it. That 
more or less, uh, well, we didn't talk about this part of the connector for the ECU. There's actually three connectors that go into the ECU. And so if you just take out the glove box and give yourself a little bit of room uh, on the pa passenger side of the car, these unplug relatively uh, easily and makes this all uh, possible. So now we're ready to drop the engine out. There's really nothing else that's holding it in except the subframe it's sitting on. We're gonna drop the steering rack, subframe, everything is a unit onto this card here. And one last important thing you can't forget is down here, uh, there's a um, steering shaft that goes to the rack. I don't know if you can see it, but I un unhooked that part of the shaft from, the, uh, from that joint right there. You gotta make sure you mark all your all your joints and everything so that uh, you can put it back together the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go right under the, you might wanna get a good view over here. You can see how I'm lining it up. I'm gonna put it right under here. Now we got an engine and a transmission here. So I'm gonna allow the oil pan to kind of hang forward a little bit. And uh, yeah, maybe like, like that. The only thing I kind of don't like is I see these studs are sticking out. You see those studs right there? Yeah. So I think what we might want to do All right, so we've definitely put some, uh, some load on this now. We've loaded it up. So now that we've loaded it up, uh, I think this wood can move back a little bit. The closer this is under the center of gravity of the pan, the better. So yeah, now we've got some uh, support under this engine, which means we should be able to undo the subframe from the car, which is what we're gonna do. All right, the tranny is loose. Now we gotta do the subframe. Brian Little. <laughs> problem where we were dropping the subframe and it wasn't coming down perfectly straight and it got cocked. Uh, the studs, there's four studs, two of them on one side got cocked uh, in the holes of the subframe. So to remedy that, we got a little floor jack there and a piece of wood. You need pressure? Nope. Oh, yeah. 
raised up the subframe on one side where it was drooping down excessively, leveled it out, and then things loosened up. It came down, it came out like butter.